if I tell Poco X2 is more powerful than OnePlus 7T Pro, 7 Pro, K20 Pro and Poco F1, definitely you will not believe it. Because you're going to compare these smartphones with the benchmark score, definitely uh, Poco X2 having the least benchmark score and OnePlus 7T Pro are the highest benchmark score and the highest price range. So in this video, we'll be going to see on comparison of Poco X2 and drawbacks of Poco F1. So with no more time, let's get started. Okay, well, we have to compare Poco X2 with these kinds of smartphones. So let's get started. Now we have to know the specifications of these smartphones, not in depth, but we have to know the major specifications of these smartphones. I'm having a top speed content. Poco F1 comes with all the standard and for the power 8 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM memory. And K20 Pro comes with all the standard and 8 gigs of RAM and 8 memory and 2 gigs of RAM only memory. And one for 7 Pro comes with all the standard and 8 gigs of RAM and 8 memory and 2 gigs of RAM only memory. And finally, one plus 7 T Pro comes with all the standard and 8 gigs of plus 8 gigs of RAM and 8 memory. And two of these of great on memory. Now let's make sure of these smartphones are get it over. And now we're going to talk about the drawbacks of Poco F1. Poco F1 having the several drawbacks like uh, first of all, Poco F1 having the IPS LCD 60 Hz display. If they are promoting the 60 Hz display, they should change the panel from IPS LCD to AMOLED panel. But they didn't do like that. If they're using the IPS LCD panel, they should increase the refresh rate from 9. 60 Hz to 90 Hz, if possible, they should use 120 Hz, but they didn't do like that also. Why I'm telling that uh, to increase the refresh rate of the smartphone or change the panel from IPS LCD to AMO, that means actually Coco phone is a flagship killer to the OnePlus 6 series, so OnePlus 6 series comes with the AMOLED panel, so they should use the AMOLED panel in Coco phone, but they didn't do like that. So they'll be using the IPS LCD, but they decrease the refresh rate from 90 to 60 Hz. That is a normal panel because uh, 60 Hz display is a uh, normal smartphone is having because uh, Poco F1 is a flagship killer, so they didn't do like that. And the next drawback is the heating issue. Many of the heating questions in Twitter, Poco F1 actually get a heater. Why is this getting the heat in Poco F1? So I'm going to talk about the heating issue in just uh, as a second disadvantage in the Poco F1 or drawback in the Poco F1. Actually, Poco F1 will get heated up to 40 degrees Celsius to using a normal usage like uh, opening any apps or taking a video. It actually reaches up to 40 degrees Celsius for if you're using continuously too harsh. If you're using the extreme, uh, if you're going to use your smartphone to the extreme range that playing a PUBG Mobile at uh, HD 60 frames per second or HDR 40 frames per second, your po Poco F1 triggered to 45 degrees Celsius. If you want to use the uh, GFX tool to unlock the 60 frames per second in HDR content and playing uh, PUBG Mobile even at one hour it reaches to 49 degrees Celsius. Why this happens actually? This happens due to two reasons that is the first is failure mechanism of liquid cooling technology and another is the plastic body which is build structure of the Poco F1. And now let's talk about how Poco F1 gets here. Poco F1 comes with Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 uh, which is the first 10 nanometer temperature in the series of 800 series of Snapdragon. Due to the failure mechanism of liquid cooling technology, the heat is has been disassociated into the smartphone itself. So the smartphone gets heated up very quickly. And the second thing is the build quality. If they're using the metal body in the Poco F1, the heat has been trapped by the metal and which is not sent into the phone itself also. So the smartphone will not get heated up. But they used to the plastic body as a build quality so the plastic is not going to heat and electricity at last the plastic will not trap the heat it, if you're going to increase the heat in the book work for it, the plastic actually ejects the heat spontaneously outside the smartphone so if you're going to use this book work for one or two hours at the extreme range your phone will not get anything but your hand will get paralyzed means that your finger will get paralyzed for 5 minutes and then now the third main drawback in Poco F1 that is TRM intent actually if you're going to buy a Poco F1 it will come up with wide one entry certification and if you're going to update a Poco F1 and it will come with wide one L1 certification that is true a software wide one L1 certification and 
The Wide World L1 certification is used to achieve the encrypt content up to 1080p full HD. And the Wide World L3 certification is used to encrypt the encrypt content up to 540p natural. GRM content lies in Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, BBC, etc. But the Poco Watch F1 has the ability to take it up to 1080p if you're going to check it out in the settings. But actually, Poco F1 take it up to 540p only. But how to check it out? To check it out, I personally use the pixel monitor in it. You're going to run any video in Netflix and turn on the pixel monitor, and the pixel reader will be up to 540p, but it will not occur 541 also. But if you're going to check it out the settings, it will be saying that full HD 1080p is accessible then. But Poco often has been customized the UI in a software update that is in the settings it shows full HD 1080p, but if you're going to show the reality that is 540p, that is 540 pixel one lay. But in settings it can say that it can be up to I told the three drawbacks of the Poco F1. These drawbacks are never get repaid by any software updates by the Poco F1. If the number of updates can come to Poco F1, but these are all not actually recovered by the software, but you need external hardware to perform this uh, drawback. Actually, this is if you're going to check it out the first drawback, the 60 Hz display, so you need external hardware like AMOLED panel or increasing the refresh rate, you need external display so which is not possible if you're going to check it out the certification which is not possible even though you need external hardware or certification so if you're going to buy a popcorn this problem will be there for long and longer time and now we'll be going to compare the poco x2 actually i previously told that poco x2 is more powerful than oneplus 7t pro oneplus 7 pro k20 pro and poco f1 but if you're going to check it out the benchmark score, OnePlus 7T Pro is more powerful and Poco X2 is least powerful. But what is reality that I'm going to say? Actually, except Poco X2, all, all the smartphones are underclocked versions, means that the performance has been underclocked. But this is something a chained thing is to believe that. But what's its reality? I'm going to tip in that. Actually, if you're going to check it out the spec list of any smartphone like OnePlus 7 Pro, OnePlus Sound Pro comes with um, a 60Hz AMOLED display and Qualcomm Snapdragon 855. That's that can uh, overflow it and 48MP as a main primary camera. If you're going to check the processor mobile platform spec based in the Qualcomm side, they provide the processor can perform how much task and how to extreme it can perform there with no effect. But if you're going to check it on the Qualcomm side, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 can perform a 108 megapixel unit, but in OnePlus 7 Pro comes with 64 mega, sorry, 48 megapixel. But if you go into check it out, it can put actually run 108 million pixels. And OnePlus 7 Pro, that is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, can run a 120 frames per second task. That is a 120 FPS task is accessible in. Uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, but there is no external hardware like the display has been clocked at 60 Hz. So, this is a 60 Hz refresh rate display, so it has been under clock. Why am I talking about the 60 Hz or 90 Hz? You will say that we have been good enough to use the 60 Hz display or we have been good enough to run a 60 FPS gaming in the smartphone, but actually, the future becomes from the 90 and 120 FPS only. Don't think about future means apart two years, just three to six months only. Actually, most of the UI developers and game developers like Unreal Engine and Canson Gaming Engine are going to introduce their game up to 120 FPS or 90 FPS gaming in a graphic settings to enrich the game performance and to decrease the latency only the 90 and 120 FPS gaming will be there. But you will say that we will be going to unlock this in using the GFX tool. But actually, what's going on? I'm going to say. If you're using the GFX tool to unlock the 120 FPS and 90 FPS uh, in a game like PUBG Mobile, 
you but uh, it, you will be claiming under 60 frames per second only I am going to tell in detail that is your processor will push 120 frames per second that is the 120 frames in one second the processor will push that's not a problem actually but your display that is the screen will push up to 60 fps only because the 60 hertz mo uh, means not not a monitor it's a 60 hertz display so it will push up to a 60 fps only so actually you will be getting the 60 frames in one second not a 120 even 90 is also not possible 90 is only possible in 1 per 72 that is around 55 bucks but the Poco X2 is around uh, 19 bucks only that's a top model I'm talking about 19 bucks only the uh, top model and the low end pro model is something uh, 15 bucks but it can have in the 120 years. you can actually get a 120 first display Poco X2 is not an underclock version Poco X2 is an overclock version you can check out the GPU or from the CPU is also overclock the top first moving picture is 64 megapixels the sound that the G can build access has been maxed out, this performance has been maxed out and whatever the liquid cooling technology is perfectly working in the So at last we can come to conclude that you can get a all um, means that all the potential sources in Poco X2 all are available you can use at any time but in even the Fire 1 Pro or 72 and the 55 bucks there is no resource available even though the processors are capable but there's no extra hardware to perform it out and you are asking that some of the is a new range processor we need a flagship processor like 800 series to perform higher end processing if there is any smartphone name actually there is a smartphone the name is Razer Phone 2 Razer Phone 2 is the world's first smartphone having 120 hz display at 2070 itself the Razer Phone 2 has been launched in 2018. The Razer Phone is has been launched in 2017. The Razer Phone itself, the 120 Hz display is there. That is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. But the Razer Phone is powered by Qualcomm 845 Mac Tor. Full and full overclocked version. The GPS new overclock. 120 FPS game you can get. There is a 120 Hz hyper sensitive display. The Gen new two liquid cooling system that is S type of cooling chamber and the vapor copper chamber has been enrolled throughout the motherboard which ensure that the uh, smartphone will be below a 30 degree Celsius only not even to the 35 so actually Razer Phone 2 is a good smartphone only and many fans of the Razer are waiting for Razer Phone 3 so Razer Phone 2 will be launched as soon as possible if you want to buy a Razer Phone 2 the link is in the description check out the link and get 20% discount on Razer Phone 2 and now the last moment has been okay. We have been talking about the uh, disadvantage on our products of the Poco F1 and we have been going to compare the Poco X2 towards the other series of smartphone and have been able to conclude that Poco X2 is a more uh, power efficient smartphone and better smartphone in the real life. And now the time for announce the type of giveaway in this video. This video means that the giveaway for this video is a Huawei P4. E40 Pro Plus. These are the giveaway for this video actually. This is an international giveaway, so there is no problem. If you are watching any country, or if you will be getting the giveaway if you go to check out the giveaway link. The giveaway link is not in my description. If you want to get a giveaway link, you need to subscribe my channel and at any cost you will be get the giveaway link during 2020 need to automatic enroll to it. So if you want to get over P40 Pro, grab by subscribing my channel and click the link and check it out step by step to get the quality for the pro and enroll your email in my description links that on the comment section so let's wind up this video Huawei P40 series a new vision for what a smartphone can be all of this power comes from the Kirin 990 5G SoC power up hassle free Experience visionary photography.